Hey guys and welcome back. So another new episode about the Zabbix and uh, once again about a new functionality of the Zabbix 4.2. Previously, we talked about how you can integrate Prometheus inside the Zabbix by using a new pre-processing options. So if you haven't seen that video yet, go ahead and open the channel. You will find it there along with uh, the other videos. But for today, the timescale database support and how you can configure it and uh, what it actually is and how it looks like. So what's the benefit of the timescale database? First of all, it is partitioning, but to understand what is the benefit of the partitioning, we must dig into how the Zabbix actually, actually behaves with the historical data. So you know that we do have a Zabbix server, right? Let me make this a little bit busier then we do have a database so all of the history we do have five historical tables and two tables for the trends all of the data is written there and then we have settings in the front end where we can specify that i want to keep the history of this item for let's say two months uh, for that item it might be a year and uh, well basically based on your needs at the same time, you can override all of those settings uh, in just one place in Administration General Housekeeper. You can say that I want to override all my history settings to, let's say, three months of the history and two years of the trends. Then inside the Zabbix, we do have internal process, which is called uh, Housekeeper. And this process has basically just one task. Let me actually delete this, it looks awful. Uh, it has just one task to go inside the database, scan all the history and trends table for the data that is older than we have specified in the front end and delete it. But what's the problem with that? The housekeeper executes simple delete statements in the database, which means that if you will have a extremely large database so let's say 500 gigs or uh, one terabyte of the data the housekeeper process will become slow it will require much more time to scan all the tables delete the data while it will be doing that other internal processes also will be busy that's why quite often on large installations uh, we do recommend to switch from the housekeeper to partitioning now let's talk about a partitioning so how it looks like if previously with a housekeeper we had one history table and inside it we had all the data which could be for three months if we are using partitioning that means that we have multiple partitions grouped by day that's that's what usually happens we could have a uh, partitioning for partition for 0, 01 then 0, 02 0, 03 and 0, 04 these all are days then what, what how do we actually manage those partitions how do we delete the old data that depends from the configuration so it could be done uh, using the internal procedures uh, in the mysql or in the postgres it's usually managed by the internal triggers or it could be done with external management script which basically executes each day and checks our conditions that if uh, let's say i want to keep just three days of the history and my script sees that there is already day number four it will simply drop that partition so drop instead of delete and scan of the table is way more faster First of all, no performance issues. Second thing, it's faster. And uh, another thing, it will also free up a disk space for your system. Now, what's the benefit of a timescale? Timescale DB. The thing is that timescale database has uh, something that we could call internal partitioning the partitioning that is implemented from the box and uh, before we talk about the partitions itself we need to understand what is a time scale it's not a database engine it's nothing new it's basically just an extension on a PostgreSQL database so to use a time scale DB you will still have to 
uh, in install or take your existing PostgreSQL database. Then you need to install uh, you need to install a timescale database. So how to do that? We will not do that in uh, today's video. I already have it pre-installed, but basically just go to the timescale official page, then you will need to get started now. And uh, the installation is pretty straightforward. So first of all, there is also an option to launch uh, timescale database from the Docker. And uh, besides, we already updated our official Docker containers, so you can take Zabbix containers and simply enable the timescale DB support, or you can choose your operating system. In my case, it was a Red Hat. Uh, I wanted to do that via the YUM, and I've installed the PostgreSQL version 11 for this task. So what, what are the steps to install it? Um, first of all, uh, install the Postgres development group um, package, then <clears throat> then we need to add a repo for a timescale support and uh, configure your database. This will, uh, this binary, this package name will appear after you will install the timescale DB Postgres SQL depends on which version of a Postgres you have. And this timescale DB tune will ask you multiple things. First of all, it will also provide an initial tuning of your database based on your hardware, like based on the number of CPUs you have, a memory, it will suggest uh, what kind of parameters should be added in a PostgreSQL config file and will ask for a confirmation. So basically you will have to just type like yes, 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 yes. After that, you can uh, after that, actually, the timescale DB is already enabled and uh, running on your Postgres database. So that's it, what you need to do in terms of timescale and a Postgres SQL. Then the next part is, I'm, I have my documentation here, the Zabbix official documentation, timescale database support. This is in the what's new page of 4.2 timescale and uh, Assuming I already have a database and uh, it is also absolutely fine if you already do have a database with some actual history data, then you need to uh, click here, migration to timescale DB and execute this command. So you already have a timescale DB enabled in the Postgres, but you need to also enable it on your Zabbix database. So the most important thing here is uh, choose the correct user and uh, the database. So if your database is called differently, then just type it as it should be. Then you need to apply the patch and the patch will be available uh, in the folder user share doc Zabbix server PostgreSQL, this uh, folder name may change depending on uh, which version of uh, Zabbix server you downloaded for the, from the repo. Right now it is a 4.0 and along with a create.sql.jz, which is uh, absolutely common thing, there is also a timescale db sql jz again and uh, what it has inside, basically just a couple commands. A separate command for five history tables and for two trends tables with the parameters that first of all it will create a hyper table and uh, migrate data true which means that it will migrate existing data to the chunks which basically is partition and a chunk time interval which means that uh, these are seconds which represents one day so basically uh, this this uh, procedure create hyper table will partition our existing history and trends table divide them in one day period partitions right and then it also sets the global settings in the front end for trends and history global so how it looks in the front end in the front end the last part i told you about a global setting is inside administration general then drop down housekeeping. So these settings must be on override item history period and override uh, trend storage period. Why should we use them? 
Remember, I drew out how the partitioning looks and how the partitioning data management looks like. So let's say we're talking about a history table and we have a history one, history two, history three. All these are chunks in the language of the timescale DB or a partitions that we might be used for. Remember that I told you that there must be something that manages these uh, partitions, that drops something that is older than we want to keep. But uh, you won't have to create some, some custom scripts or custom internal procedures inside the Postgres because everything is already inside and supported in Zyvex 4.2. And uh, well, actually the housekeeper is the one, uh, the process which manages these partitions. So when you are specifying in the front end, this setting, override item history period and trends period, one day and one year, you are basically specifying that you want to keep one day of the history and one year of the trends. And each time the housekeeper will be executed, it will check the settings from the front end and it will see that I have one day data storage period for the history. And what it will do, it will check first day like okay we're keeping it second day it's already out of our period and a third day also out of the period so it will simply drop it that's why having these parameters is uh, basically mandatory what's also important here uh, since you have override item history period don't forget that this also overrides uh, the items in most cases master items where you have specified that history storage period should be zero uh, which is mostly used in pre-processing when you are retrieving a large amount of the data you want to pre-process it extract something with the dependent items and then simply drop the data without even writing it inside the database so if you will be using a timescale db you will have to check these override item history periods and it will it will override also the periods with a zero, so you will keep a history for those, uh, those huge items. What else? Uh, before this, before Timescale DB, with any, any, any basic database engine that we do support, what happened when you deleted an item in the front end? Let's say you created some item for a test, it collected some history, then you click delete immediately also the historical values are deleted from the database. With a time scale, it works a little bit differently. You can delete an item, but the history will remain in the history table chunks until the period of the chunk will be older than you want to keep. So until this data storage period one day will come, so the older partitions will drop. Then the data will be deleted. What else? Uh, how it actually looks like from, from the database perspective. So I can clear the screen, cd su minus postgres, go inside a Zabbix database and you can see that backslash d plus history. So right now I have, uh, at this moment I have just one chunk and uh, for the trends, I have three chunks, you see, time scale DB internal, uh, this would be a first one, second one, and a third one. If, let's say, I would go to the front end and change trends to one day, click update, then I will go back to the CLI, quit from the database, exit. First of all, I will update the configuration cache of the Zabbix server, executed successfully, and then Zabbix server minus R, housekeeper, execute. So I am executing the housekeeper successfully. Now let's go back to the Postgres database. So su minus Postgres, Postgres SQL, connect to the Zabbix and uh, D plus trends. What do I have here? You see, Currently, I have just one chunk. Before I've changed the setting in the front end, I had three chunks. And uh, 
that it is. That's how the timescale DB is managed inside a Zabbix. That's how the internal from the box available partitioning works. Uh, the most important thing that I probably should have mentioned in the beginning of this video, the timescale database support is fully experimental. So I would personally probably not suggest to try it out on your production environments. Uh, if you have again some kind of development environments then why not? Uh, we did many tests, many performance, performance tests and we did not notice any, any visible bottlenecks but uh, once again, the support is uh, fully experimental. The Timescale DB is also a um, pretty fast growing and changing project. So we cannot be sure how this will, how this, this will work and behave after like a month, two or, or let's say one year. Uh, that's about it. Uh, just additional stuff. I already told you that uh, with this Timescale DB support, you partition only five history tables and two trends. That's it. Not the events, uh, not the sessions, the audit log, nothing else. It is not possible to do that with a native uh, provided steps and provided database script. Uh, if you would want to, technically it is possible to set up uh, partitioning and hypertables, let's say also on the events table, but that is the thing that you should definitely not do. It will not work and the consequences will be uh, simply bad. You, you will find out many, many additional problems. So please do not do that. Uh, test only with the things that we do support and those are the history tables and the trends table. Uh, yeah, that's about it. So Thank you for today, thank you for this video and uh, see you in the next ones. Uh, if you have any additional questions about, uh, about the timescale or some other topics, again, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments. Uh, click the like button, click the subscribe and uh, see you later. Goodbye.